Hey everybody, it's Kathy from Crowder's Mountain in North Carolina. I had a friend suggest to me to make a barn quilt. And I went on YouTube and found a lot of people making these and I just thought they were just wonderful, just beautiful pieces of artwork that hangs outside on barns or buildings or even people's houses. And I decided I wanted one. But instead of buying one, I'm gonna try to make it. So come along with me and I'm gonna tell you all of the mistakes that I made and show you all the boo-boos that I made. And if I can get this finished, I know you can too. So the first thing that we did, we went to Lowe's to find out what kind of wood that we needed. And I don't know why I thought I had to level that piece of wood up, but I did. But anyway, went to Lowe's and found this three-quarter inch pre-primed plywood. And so we decided that's what we would get. So it was four by eight. So when we had them cut it, we ended up with two two by twos and two three by threes and actually had a one by six left. Then we made a shelf out of it for the basement. So even though it was primed already, just to get a good uh, surface for me to work with and to draw my squares on that I, I knew I could see and it being the first one, I decided I'd go ahead and prime it again. So I used kills. it's that all-purpose kills, And I really am glad that I did that. Um, it, it worked out really well. But before I say anything else, let me tell you, I, I'm not um, as good at YouTube as I really need to be. And so I make a lot of mistakes when I'm recording. I get to working, I forget to say anything. I'm just kind of all into what I'm doing. Uh, when I remember to say something, it's usually like I'm way past that point before I remember to tell you. And so I decided until I got better at that, um, I would just delete all the audio and just do a voiceover. So that's what I'm doing now, uh, instead of just letting you hear my mumblings and rumblings and talking to myself <laughs> while I work. So anyway, uh, I, got, I got it all primed and made sure that I got the ends uh, you want to make sure you get the sides of it really well too because that that's where it'll get weathered at and you don't want it uh, you want to seal it up as best you can and so i made sure i had all the ends covered um, as well now let me show you um, my pattern that i did um, i i didn't go out and buy any kind of quilt patterns. I've never made a quilt in my life. I don't know how to piece a quilt. My mom, my grandparents, all those folks did, but I don't know how. I never learned. So I just am going by memory of what I saw them doing. So I didn't, like I said, I didn't go out and buy patterns or anything like that. I found one that I liked. Um, I googled it and a whole bunch of uh, pictures came up and I found one that I thought that I could do and it's called a carpenter star so I just took the graph paper that I had and graphed it out and I tried to color in the boxes the best way I could to kind of help myself stay on track uh, so I did get it grafted on that paper so then my next thought was okay I'll take my yardstick I'll lay it down, draw off my one inch squares on my two by two board. But look what happened. Look to the right side of your screen. That little booger is not a square. Come to find out, I couldn't figure it out to save my life what was going wrong. Come to find out, did y'all know a yardstick is not an inch wide? I didn't know that. I thought all of them all my life was an inch wide. 
but they're not. So instead of erasing all that or painting over it, I started all over again. You see what I did? That's the one that I did the first. Did first. And I just flipped that baby around and started all over again. I thought, this piece of wood is not going to beat me. I I'm going to have it. So here you go. We got it. Got two sides. And we're going to... I started working. Let me tell you. I started working this time from the outside in. Where before I was working from the inside out. And I now I've got this square that I can draw that pattern on in the middle and I should be all right now so I'm just gonna start drawing it and see what happens this poor little eraser I'm telling you I think it's more tired than I am I've been at that to get this to this point I had been at it about six hours. And look what I discovered. There is a square. I saw that tool down here forever, didn't know what it was. Wondered how I was gonna square that off. And I remembered having that tool. And it's called a square. Can you, can you imagine? Well, I used that beautiful little tool it's been around forever, and I drew my one by one inch squares. I've got 18 squares across and 18 squares up. It's a perfect square. And that's exactly the pattern that I had grafted out. So I got kind of excited then I finally got to this place and hadn't used algebra yet. So I started drawing. I drew my pattern out. You make a bunch of make a bunch of triangles and some squares, and I got to the place where I started taping it up with my frog tape. And I was getting excited then, cause I thought once that tape goes down, it's not long before you start painting. So you see all my messes, my scribbled and everything else. By the time I got to this place to start painting. I decided I would just prime it all over again. I just wanted to have a clear, real pretty coat to start painting on. Because the, the, my first color is going to be that red. And I pressed that frog tape down real good so that I can make sure I didn't have any bleed through. But I started pulling the tape off and I started seeing a pattern coming through and look, 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 look. It looks like we're gonna have a barn quilt one day. We're not excited now. So I taped up all the blue, the places it's gonna have blue. And once again, I tried my best to press down on that frog tape. Well, I found this little, uh, I wanna tell you this. I found this little tool on Amazon. It's called a heat gun or a heat, a heat tool. It's what it's called. And it's only 300 watts. So I can put my paint down, dry it, put another coat and dry it. And I don't have to stop and start, stop and start letting things get dry. And it don't bake your paint either. So it, it's just a real, it's warm enough to dry paint, but not too hot to ruin your paint. So once I got that real pretty blue on there, I realized that that red was not gonna cut it. I needed another coat of that. Cause you can see how, you can see how the white is bleeding through and I've missed spots in it. Um, that blue is just absolutely beautiful. And when I pull the tape off, I still saw mistakes that I hadn't fixed. I thought that I was getting it done that second time but I didn't. You can see all these little gaps that I've got in there. And that that's, a lot of that is the blue that I didn't get down to start with. And that red needs yet another color, another coat. So 
So I'm just going to tape it up again and do it again. I want to have something that I can be proud of. And I want to I want to know that I did it to the best of my ability. I don't like things done halfway. And so I am just going to keep on and keep on and keep on until this is done. It's not going to defeat me now. I'm, I'm determined. <laughs> so I'm taping it all up again. And I'm going to use my little heat wand. And we're going to get it right this time. One trick that I found um, was when I'm painting anything, I'll put my uh, paintbrushes in little baggies like that so it keeps them moist and when I have to go back in to get another color to fix something or whatever, if I go away and come back another day to work on it, um, my paint brushes are still moist and wet. So I've, paint, I've taped up the white now um, using up more eraser but I taped up the white, I painted it. I think I put two coats of the white, maybe even three. And so now this is the second section of the white that had to be painted. And so you'll see when I get that pulled off, you start to see that it really, really is taking shape and it's just looking so pretty now. You have to do some fancy cutting on that tape sometime to get it just right. So I pulled off all the tape. And look, I still got some boo-boos. It's not hurting anything. I still got some eraser left. So, while I'm fixing those little places, there's other spots in here that the blue and the red just did not meet exactly. And so I'm using this time to, to go around every little place that I could think of or every little place that I could find and fix it all. And during the painting of the white so I had some bleed through I got excited I know I didn't press the frog tape down hard enough and so I did have bleed through on the white so I'm getting the red the blue and white all of it fixed at the same time right now so I'm I'm really getting excited about it now I really am so we got all that Got all that uh, painted all over again and ripped all that tape up. And it finally got time to start painting the border. So I, I was really, really careful to make sure I squared those corners up really good and had some fancy cutting on that. I'm telling you what, I have used a ton of frog tape. But there's the first coat. And I think I put two more on there before I was finished. And now look what we have. We have our barn quilt. Got everything to line up finally. And it's a beautiful barn quilt. I've got to figure out how to seal it. It can't go outside like it is. I've got to seal it somehow. I hadn't figured that part out yet. But... I want you to know that I was so excited. This turned out, now didn't even think about it, but it turned out red, white, and blue. So my Marine Vietnam veteran is tickled to death over it. And he gets to hang it on his building. So we went 
from finding a picture on Google, drawing it on a piece of paper, and we got this vision to turn out to be this reality. And I'm just so excited about it. Like I said, made a lot of boo-boos, but I inspired my granddaughter and her boyfriend, and they came over and made a barn quilt for themselves. Look at that. That's, that's Tony's uh, Robin, and that's Miranda's Cardinal. Tony's Robin, his name is Lieutenant Dan, cause he ain't got no legs. I hope you enjoyed making this barn quilt with me. I sure enjoyed doing it. And thank you for coming along with me on this journey. And if you enjoyed this, click the bell and subscribe cause look what I'm gonna try to make next time. Not sure I'm gonna use those colors, but I like them. Thank you.